It's Nicole Brandon, and welcome to Hourglass Bride. It is such a joy and such a pleasure being with you today. I have such a special and such a unique show for you. Today we are talking with an extraordinary man. His name is Walter Smoiver, and he is amazing. When we talk about a man's man, manly, manly, manly man, he has done everything. He was a pro athlete. He promoted nightclubs. He has been a life coach. He has worked with celebrity charities. He's been a boxer and just truly one of the best people I've ever met. And we're bringing Walter on today to talk about the man's side of dating. What it's, we always talk about when we always have these incredible guests on from all over the world that give secrets and tips and techniques and hints on how women should get men, hold men, how you deepen your relationship, how you ask for what you want. But this is the first time that we've brought a man on to share his perspective and point of view. And I can't imagine a better man to be sharing with you today than Walter. So, Walter, Welcome to the show. What a grand gift to have you here. Well, Nicole, uh, I'd like to say thanks, first of all, for having me. And, wow, with an intro like that, is that really me? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, really, it's amazing. You know, I was looking at your bio, and I was absolutely blown away because it's the more of the more. I mean, you have such power and such strength. I look at, you know, your boxing and your pro athlete background and then I look at your gregarianness and the way that you've been able to work in nightclubs and you've even I believe worked in animation and, and voiceovers and then you've done all this incredible, unbelievable charity work and mentorship of kids and teens. And so you were the most well rounded, most successful, most productive man I've come across and I'm so blessed that you're with us today to share your perspective on me. Well, wait, 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 Nicole. Who are we talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> you wow, you. I, I should I should hire you as my PR person. <laughs> I'm telling you. I would love that. I would love that. And I know that the first time that we had had a conversation that you said, gosh, I would love to be able to share with women. And I think it's perfect that you do that because certainly, you know, from a woman's perspective, and we're here in America, but this show is international. We have people listening to the show from Malta and South Africa and from all over the world. And women say it is so hard to find a guy these days. And there you are you know, on the other side of the line. And so do guys say that? It's so hard to find a woman. Let me tell you something. I'm here to tell you it is not easy, you know, especially when you get a little more mature, a little older. It's, you know, you get set in your ways. You kind of let, you kind of make the mistake of, like, letting past relationships into your new relationships. And that's a huge no-no. But, yeah, it's hard, especially especially we live here in L.A. I live in Santa Monica, and uh, I've tried the online dating. I've tried just, you know, meeting through friends, and the worst is getting set up with your friends because you're like, wow, is that what you really think I belong with? But, but the point being that, yeah, I mean, we have our thing, too, that, no, it, it's not easy, you know. But, but uh, as you well know, I have actually recently, the last couple months, I've met a pretty cool lady, and uh, we've been seeing each other ever since, and it's been going really well. So it is possible. All you people out there in Radio Land, it is possible. Don't get jaded. I know it's easy, but uh, it, it it is possible. And I'll even share some stories, uh, if Nicole permits, uh, Absolutely, but, uh, and I would love your stories. And I also, I have questions too because we have, you know, people you're yeah, going yeah. crazy. So, for myself, and also obviously for people that are typing into me right now, it is like the thing for people to text these days instead of for a guy to call. It will text, and that's so frustrating. And so, is that? kind of considered the norm now for guys to text instead of to call a woman? Well, if you're a metro boy uh, and if you're a 
you know, I guess for the younger generation, that's how they're coming up, and that's how they communicate, and that's a whole and that's a whole other show. How how we just you know how we're losing the art of person to person talk and communication. But no, I would suggest to everybody that's listening out there, especially in the beginning, pick up a phone, talk to the person. Much gets lost in the translation when you text, and and it's just so easy to screw up or or take or take a meaning of the wrong way, and no, 100% stay away from from texting. Look, once you've created a relationship, and if you want to say something quick or whatever, or or once you know each other and you kind of know each other's inflections and you know how each other thinks, then yeah, fine, or whatever, okay? It's a convenience. But in the beginning, no way. Wow. I'm so glad you said that because, uh, you know, obviously we have people – you know, here asking, and then is it appropriate for a woman to ma- ask a man out on a date? I think absolutely not. I think, and we just had this conversation around the Thanksgiving dinner table the other night, and uh, no, I, I don't think it's inappropriate. I, I think it's all about how it's done, you know. And, and look, the way I am is if I meet a woman out, like when I met my current girlfriend, uh, I met her in the gym. As a matter of fact, at the infamous Gold's Gym, the mecca of bodybuilding in Venice, California, okay, I I saw her there. I saw her there a few times. I walked up to her a couple times, and, you know, I let it be known that maybe I'm interested or whatever, but she was kind of like a lot of women are at the gym. She had her earphones on, and and, you know, you kind of – she didn't really open the door for me. So I kind of left it alone. Then all of a sudden, I see her in church one day. Wow, totally di- totally different person. Now we had a conversation. Now it was nice, and that's where it all started. But, you know, she even thought when she saw me, like, well, I could have said something to him too. So, yes, ladies, it's okay. It's okay to ask a man out. Okay, but it's all on how you deliver, on how, on how you ask. Wow. These are just such wonderful answers. And then you were talking about dating online, which is, I mean, right now, because we live in such separate places. I know that in long ago, we lived in communities. We lived in villages, and everybody took care of everybody else's child and we had elders that we would go to instead of Yahoo or Google when we had a question we there were people that we could go ask. <laughs> and you could say to somebody here, you know, take care of my kids and everybody did that and we all knew one another. And now that it's we live in so many different vast surroundings, some different nations and, and you know, different states and our buildings sometimes are so close together and we don't even know our neighbors that are on our other floors and other times we live so far apart than people and so online has sort of become the way to connect with people and so teach me and tell me what you know or believe about online dating if you would because I'm so curious Uh, is your audience really prepared for this (laughs) (laughs) everybody grab a martini Oh, oh, oh you're stirring the hornet's nest here uh, I I will do this, okay? When I first came to California, which was about three years ago, okay, you know L.A. is a tough place. It's a tough place for everything. It's a tough place for careers. It's a tough place for work. It's a tough place for dating. Um, it's just a tough place overall, okay? And everybody's got their little la-la land experience, and everybody's here for a reason. But... When I first got on it, it was new, and it was kind of like, oh, wow, like a kid in a candy store, okay? But let me tell you something. In my experiences with my mindset, I am an old-school guy. I was born in Europe. I'm a Croatian. I was raised it. I was, I mean, my whole core is European. So I'm an old-school guy, okay? And it's like, it's so backwards, It's so backwards of the law of nature. 
it's like I told you when, when I met my girlfriend, your friend that you also know, okay? I saw her and I went, wow, I like her. And like the predator that like the predators that we men are, I I went after her. Okay, now online dating. What I found was I connected online with women, and it was very nice with a few of them even having conversations. Okay, and you feel like you got a connection. It's fun. Um, you both laugh, and you know as well you know as well as I do. If a man can make a woman laugh, good things happen. Okay. Oh my gosh! But, absolutely. But 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 it's like it's backwards. So you don't feel them. You don't feel the chemistry, but you feel you have a nice com- You have a nice conversation. You look at the pictures. Now whether they're current or not. That's a 50-50 toss-up, okay? If, if you're actually looking at the correct pictures of the current person, who knows? But my point being is that I've had this happen to me a few times. On the phone, I thought, wow, great girl, can't wait to meet her. And then you meet, and for whatever reason, there's zero chemistry, then it becomes kind of uncomfortable. Then all those things that you talked about on the phone and all that phone chemistry that you had, now it's in person. Now the vibes really get to meet. Mm. And it's like, oh, uh uh-uh, this isn't for me. And then it becomes uncomfortable. So it's just backwards. I, I, I personally don't like it. For a lot of people, it works. It's all about personal preference, okay? For a lot of people, it's how they get dates. It's how they meet people. And so many people, when when they get online and they first talk to somebody, well, let's just be friends and let's, if it doesn't work out, we'll be friends. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Say you have a nice conversation with a girl, a woman, and then you meet her, and there's just no chemistry. You, you really think she's going to want to be your friend then? Okay? There is a certain amount of, of uh, feeling of feeling let down, of feeling like, well, he doesn't like me or whatever. So, I don't know the online dating, and I've got some stories to say. Plus, there's a lot of dishonesty on it too. So you really have to be careful, folks. You really have to be careful. Like I said, for some people, it works wonderful. I'm sure there's some great stories out there, and uh, you know, most of one online site that says more of our people get married than any other site. And there are, I mean, and I know that there are a lot of sites that do work, you know, for people and a lot of techniques and, and, you know, being online. And as a man, how do you choose? There's so many sites out there, you know, from, you know, your Christian Mingles to your eHarmony where you have to fill out extensive surveys to something like Match.com where you can just sort of very quickly see a lot of people. And do you say, I'm now ready for my forever after, or I'm now ready, and from that pick the site, or do you go to multiple sites as a man and say, I'm going to try all these sites and see what kind of women come my way or what my possibilities are? What's the thinking behind that for a guy? Well, my thought process was is I did not have a thought process because I was one of those guys. <laughs> being being an ex-pro athlete, being 6'6", six, six, being, I guess I have a certain look or whatever it is, okay, I always thought, geez, I have to go online dating. I have to get a date? Really? And plus, I was, I was a nightclub owner in South Florida, okay? So I never, that was never a thing. But then when I came to L.A., I had a neighbor that says, dude, you you, you got to try this out, okay? So the first one I got on, because I really didn't know the difference between A, B, and C, okay? But the one that he suggested was the Plenty of Fish, okay? And the other one he suggested was OK Cupid. He said, why pay to be on, on a few of the pay ones when you can try these free ones and kind of see what's going on? So that was my first foray into 
into the online dating scene. And, um, you know, and I think that people are on these sites for numerous reasons, for numerous agendas, okay? But uh, so as far as why to pick which one, I'm not that I'm, I'm not that savvy in that world. All I can tell you is about my personal experiences, and as I said, the reason that I got on it was because I'm new in LA, and I'm not into the bar scene anymore. I'm not into hanging out in the clubs and the restaurants and all of that kind of stuff. So I was like, okay, I'll 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 try it. But you know what? Okay. I am so glad, I am so glad, Nicole, and I'll say it one more time, that the woman I'm dating now, I met in person. Yeah, and I love that. And, I mean, and she's extraordinary, so I can say, you know, what a gift she is. We've got all these questions popping up. For, I want to continue on just because I've got so many people asking things. So my favorite okay. questions actually are coming up right now, which I'm loving this, that my audience must know me so well that they are actually asking questions I would want to ask. So uh, people are asking about chivalry, opening car doors and pulling out seats. And, you know, I know personally for myself, if a man does not walk me to my car, it doesn't matter if it's a business associate or if it's someone I was on a date with that I met, if he does not walk me to my car, I really don't want to see that person again. Like if my safety was not important to that guy. And okay. people say, Nicole, you're crazy because that guy might not know that. He might not have been raised that way. And don't you think it's important you let him know? But for me, I have such a charge when someone does not walk me to my car. And you know, I have guys that say, well, there are a lot of women that don't like their car door open, or they say, I can do it myself, and I can carry my bags. And and so what is your take on gallantry or, you know, being able to do those things for women? Or are there women you've come across that have said to you, I can do it, don't do this for me? Well, I will, I guess I can put that to you like this. Okay, men are and I can't speak for women, obviously, but men are, and I think, and I've heard that women do the same thing, but like me, when I meet somebody or like when I meet a woman, you either put them in the, wow, I'm interested category or in the friend category, okay? Now, obviously, we're talking about the interested category. Yeah, I think if if you meet someone as a man, okay, speaking as a man, if you meet someone and you're really, you know, you're like, wow, I like this one. I want to get to know this one. Uh, Yeah, then it's nicer to do all those things. See, I am, with me, I guess the way I am, it's how a woman inspires me. If she inspires me to be that, I love it. But it's all about the vibe because, like you said, some women love this, some women love love that. But if they inspire me, if a woman inspires me to be that guy, to be that knight in shining armor, to be that guy that will open the door for us, to be that guy that consciously, when you're walking hand in hand down the street, will switch places so he's walking on the outside of the of the sidewalk. Just little things are like that. Or like or like even say you're driving in the car and all of a sudden, oops, I gotta make a quick stop. Like your right hand all of a sudden just kinda of goes over to like shield her from going forward. Just little things like that. Now, let me tell you guys, if you're listening out there, these little things go a long, long way. Okay? Absolutely. And I, you know, I so agree with that. And that's such a special, spectacular answer, Walter. And I so appreciate that because I know for myself, it's huge. It's huge. When I was younger, my brother is a year younger than myself. And so he was learning to drive and he could not drive unless I was in the car because you need the licensed <laughs> driver when he was learning. So even though he hated it, he had to take his sister with him when he was learning. You know, and had Oh, God, learning that's the learning. worst. I feel for him. <laughs> and so I used to stand outside the passenger door, and my brother would get in the car, and I would continue to stand 
outside the passenger door and my brother would get out all riled up and he'd kick the car and he'd say, but you're my sister. This is the stupidest thing in the world. And I would tell him later in life, you're going to so appreciate that I did this. <laughs> and I would say, wait. I would wait for my brother to open the car door because he couldn't go anywhere without me. And, you know, when I watch him now, he's such a gentleman and it's so cute. He has a son and when his son was a little boy when he was like five or six I would take him to restaurants and I would teach him to order and I'll say you know that I was going to have the pizza or whatever it was that I was going to have and then the waitress would come or the waiter would come and he'd say and the lady will have a pizza he'd be like five years old and I would be like teaching him to order you know but it does like you're saying you know go a long way and so along with that should a woman decide where you're going on a date like you know or because so many men say so where do you want to go tonight what do you want to do or should a guy say I'd like to take you to well you know what yes if I could just touch on the previous thing again, okay? Yes. Uh, just, again, it's about ladies. Inspire what you want in a man. Inspire it in him, okay? I can't stress that enough. And you know what? Some women won't inspire that. Some women just, they don't care about any of that. And if that's what you inspire, that's what, what you'll get. But if you want that gentleman, if you want that guy to show you in little ways how much he cares, inspire that, okay? That's so important. No, but anyway. Um, no, that's okay. perfect. Thank you. So should the man change right. the date? Because, I mean, I've heard so many oh. conversations. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Oh, come on. Where do you, you know, I don't care. Tonight's about well, you. It's like, seriously? Look, a part of how you introduced me was being a man's man and I do consider yeah. myself that very much so okay a man's man will take charge a man's man a real guy will say honey okay like say it, it's your first date and you've had and you've had some interaction and you've had some nice conversations and you get to a point where you ask her on a first date okay know who you are be assertive be a man say honey I'd like to take you out. I have a great little spot here, there. It's got this, that, you know, it's got this, that, and the rest, okay? And you make it happen, okay? Because a lot of women don't don't like to, yeah, some want to say, oh, I want you to take me here and I want you to take me there. I personally, I'm asking you out. I'm going to say, hon, Here's where we're going to do. Here's where we're going to go. And it'll be nice. Now, look, as you become a couple, as you start to date, then it's like, you know, if you, if you have a certain spot that you want to go to, if I have a certain spot, then or whatever. But I truly believe in the beginning, especially the, fir the first time, have a plan. Have a plan. <laughs> I'm so glad you're saying this. We're going to play this recording over and over and over again for our guests. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Women, most women I know don't like to be told, well, what do you want to do? I don't do anything you want to. Come on, be a guy, be a man. Okay? <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that pretty this much is, spell it out? Oh, <laughs> it's such, such wonderful information because it saves so much of, you know, the the bantering back and forth, and then um, picking women up at their, oh. yes. Uh, okay. I'll give you a cute little story, again, about our friend, okay? Um, the first time, I live in Santa Monica. Um, she was staying with a friend around the airport, okay? So that's about a half hour, 20 minutes or whatever, Okay. Um, and she used to live two blocks away from me. The day I met her at church, I'm like, yes, there she is. Here we go. She tells me, oh, that's great. I'd love to see it, but I'm moving it tomorrow down to the OC. And I'm like, abba, abba, abba. what? Okay. What? So a, a couple weeks later, I'm talking to her on the phone, 
And she says, hey, look, I I have a little time, uh, you know, uh, because she's in the process of moving, a new job, but this and that. So I just kind of gave her some time, and I gave and I gave her some space. But at the same time, we we got to the point where we're like, look, I got to see you. You got to see me. Let's do this, okay? So I did the thing because I didn't know where she was going to be, what she was. She was just all over the place. So it's not a normal, you know, situation. But I made a comment, well, look, the next time you're up here where she used to live right by me, call me and, and, and we'll go out. I'll take you out. And in a very cute, nice way, she says, oh, you're not going to be a gentleman and come, get, and come get me and take me out on a proper date? And you know what? I got the biggest charge out of that. I, I, I kind of laughed to myself and I said, you know what? You're absolutely right. Give me your address. Come get you at 8 o'clock. And we went down to Manhattan Beach to the Strand, had a nice dinner. We sat on the, we sat on the pier till 2.30 in the morning, just talking. And you know what? All because maybe at a younger age, I'd have said, nah, you call me when you're whatever, you know, being the tough guy and everything. But all because I decided you know what, she's right. I'll do it the right way. And it turned into something really, really nice, something really, really cool. So, yeah, go get them. Look, again, <laughs> when, when, you're into, when you're into the whole relationship, then the rules change. And then it's like you're both kind of doing everything, okay? But in the beginning, yes, go get her. If you want her, Go get her. Show her that you want her. And pick the place and have a plan. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. This is wonderful. We're going to put this on the website. You know, <laughs> we're going to live by. I better not let a few of my uh, guy friends hear this or, oh, am I going to hear it? But anyway, hey, hey it's the truth. So that's, that's why I got why I got a very cool, beautiful girlfriend, and that's why they're out uh, online still. There you go. That's great. And then what about, and you may not have had this experience, but I'm just curious just because people are asking, um, meeting somebody's kids. Well, I think that, okay, I came from, I was born in Europe, okay, and then my mom escaped out of communism in the old Yugoslavia. She was pregnant with me. My dad was killed in in the conflicts there before he even knew that she was pregnant. And um, so she, uh, she decided she escaped out of there. She escaped into Austria. Uh, she got caught, got put in a refugee camp, and that's where I was born. So I know a little something. And then we came to this country when I was four years old. I know a little something about about being with a single mom, okay? And I know. And then she married my stepdad when she was about when, when I was about eight years old, okay? But I remember her to this day that she said to him, mm-hmm. "I love you. I would love to marry you, but you need to know that my boy." is number one and will always be number one, okay? That being said, now that gives you a little bit of mentality where I come from and who I am, okay? That being said, as a woman, when the, when the woman has kids, or, or, or even as a guy or like whoever has the kids, if only one side has kids, make sure you like this person first. Make sure it's not a... Hey, I met a new guy. You're not going to introduce every guy to these kids. So the kids are, 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 are your, are, are your heart, are your, are your like special place. And you don't just bring anybody into your special place and introduce them to your kids. So I, I would suggest take a little time, and get to know who you're dating first, and if it looks like it's, wow, I really like this guy, and I can see some things happening here, by all means. Introduce them, absolutely, but don't be in a hurry. Great answer. 
brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's just, and as we talk about kids, I'd love to talk about you have mentored teens and you have literally changed kids' lives. And I know that you worked with a high school volunteer, you know, football program that you start the starting place with at-risk teens and even just recently there was this beautiful write-up that I read about you mentoring this teenage child and so I would love you to talk about that kind of relationship and love as well because that's there's something so special there that sometimes words that can't be spoken but I know that there's nothing more attractive to a woman than a man who cares and is generous and gives and the fact that you've chosen to give to kids and to change their lives even, you know, <laughs> makes you shimmer and shine that much brighter. And I love you to talk about that road as well because I think it's just such a special, special part of you. Well, um, and yeah, uh, you know, I've done a lot of great things in my life and thank God it's brought me a lot of successes you know, a couple of failures here and there just to keep you grounded. Um, but, and I've never been married and I've never had any kids. I, I've i had long-standing relationships, so it's not that I am not capable. It's just that that perfect one hasn't come along. But that being said, I've never had any kids. I've never had any biological kids, okay? It all started... Um, I have a sister that's, you know, um, 13 years younger than I am. And she got pregnant in college. And we're Catholic, and we don't believe in abortion. And so, and my sister was like, it was a pure accident or whatever, whatever. It it was kind of a bad, bad, you know, mental place for her. But we decided as a family, and, and in the European family or the oldest son usually kind of like takes over okay so we decided as a family no we're going to have the family baby and we will take care of her as a family okay she turned into a gorgeous 22 year old that is just unbelievable and to think that that could have been snuffed and never would have happened. But she turned into the daughter that I never had, and I was the dad that she never had. Okay, so it started with that, okay? And then I I just, as I said, I've been very blessed in life. I'm blessed with an incredible mom, and I have an incredible relationship with her. And ladies, just an FYI, that's usually a good sign when the son has a good relationship with Mom. He usually means he knows how to treat a woman. Okay? But anyway, so I, I, but but to get to the point, I've done a lot of work with at risk youth because to me, we're working with, with adults, there's already, they're already screwed up. They're already past the point a lot of times. And I just, I love working with kids where if I take them and I get them on a certain path, you know, you change lives, you change history. But it really, really kicked in for me. Um, I lived in South Florida for years. And back in 2006, I had some kind of, I I woke up and I had a, you know, some kind of epiphany. (laughs) All all of a sudden, I make a long story short, I moved out to Park City, Utah, up in the mountains, okay? And I was... Basically retired. It was me and and my girlfriend at the time and our dog Chuck, a yellow lab. <laughs> and I went. I was driving by the local high school, Park City High School, and I just decided to pull in. I saw they were having some kind of practice on the field. I got to know the coach. He turns out to be a Croatian too. We hit it off. Great. And I go, Coach, I just moved here. I got time. I got the inclination. I'm an ex ball player myself. I'd love to help. I don't need your money. I don't need or whatever. I just love helping kids. Okay. So now I'm in the, now, now I'm in the weight room. Okay. And I picked the and I picked the biggest kid and I go up to him and I said, 
I need a leader in the trenches, and what that means is um, on the line of scrimmage, okay, on the lineman. I said, can you be that guy? Yes. Yeah. Well, that kid's name was Colt Nichter, okay? And he turned out that he went from being maybe recruited with some smaller schools to I coached him his senior year on the defensive line, and I just I, – I coached him. I trained him. I became pretty much – and I really don't like the word mentor because it's been so so abused. I I I I became basically like a stepdad. Okay? And it was so cool because at that point when camp was starting, I had to go back to Florida. I had to go take care of some business. So I left. All of a sudden I get a phone call down in Florida and it's like Hey, Coach, it's Cole. Where are you at? Camp starts tomorrow. I need you here. You better freaking believe. It brought tears to my eyes. I was on a plane in two days going back, okay? So, but the point is that it's like, again, I'll say I've been majorly blessed, and I feel the need to pay it forward. And who better to pay it forward than the kids? So to make a long story short, I had him, and I had this other kid. He was a Polynesian kid, big, huge Polynesian kid, about 6'2", about 320, the wild hair, okay, just nuts, okay? This kid was a thug. He was into drug dealing. He wasn't going to finish his senior year of high school, okay? I went to his house. I sat down with him and his parents, and I basically told him, you have no choice. I'm not leaving until you say that you're playing this year and you're going to finish your senior year. Parents loved it, okay? Again, long story short, we took a kid that wasn't even going to finish high school. Nobody in his family ever finished, ever went to college, okay? And this kid went from a self-proclaimed, he did a thesis paper. He ended up going to Eastern Washington University, ended up being a captain, ended up winning a national championship, he wrote a thesis on this. Okay. Wow, what amazing he, success he went, stories! Just incredible. Wait, wait, Sorry wait, for wait, interrupting, wait. but it's just incredible. Wait, wait, but, but wait, wait, but you will love this. This kid went. This kid went from a self-proclaimed thug, drug dealer on the streets. That's what he was going to be, to being a captain winning a national championship, graduating from college, being the first, and guess what he is now? He just graduated this past year. He's going to be a DEA, and he's going to go back to Salt Lake City, and he's going to work in his old area, and he's going to create programs to help kids like he was. Oh, Walter, no. says, I mean, it's so Talk inspirational. That. That's amazing. I mean, and that's the fact that, and the same way you went to the house, the same as the woman. I went and I got him. I, I made sure that he was talked to the Thanks. parents. And, and it's that, that same diligence and determination because I think that there is no separation between relationships and love. So whether you're mentoring a child <sighs> or a teen, or whether you're reaching out for a life partner or a future with someone and a family, the fact that the way that you love is 100% of you is the way that you jump in and care. Well, it's the only way I've ever known, and it's the way that my mom instilled in me, whether I wanted to or not. Trust me, I didn't, I wasn't... My mom was like a Gestapo, man. Holy moly, I couldn't get away with nothing, man. Okay? She was hardcore. And when and when I was growing up as a kid, it was, you know, I wasn't crazy about it. Trust me. But, look, but looking back, Jesus, so without her, I, I'd probably still be in Cleveland because that's where I was raised. And I, I, I'd probably still be wherever. So, so, and I never had that mail. My mom wasn't is everything to me. Okay. I never had and I had a and I had a stepdad, but he wasn't that guy. Okay. I never had that. And that's why it's been so important for me to be that 
for some of the kids that I am that with. I love that. And I have a question that, that bridges that then, because I know that other than you're talking about, you know, we talk about what a manly man you are and how you've been able to do absolutely everything. If, you know, you had to put together a man in all the aspects, you know, strength from, you know, caring and, and generosity mm-hmm. and heart and, and providing and integrity and honor. And, and, I mean, you have every single banner of what that means. And then you also have this great sense of play and childlike joy, and I know that you have bridged this into the animation world. That you've actually done yeah. voiceovers for projects, even Jorgens. What's that in Leprechauns? Which I I love that title. Dweegans. <laughs> Dweegans. And so, so how did you say, okay, now I want to play in this huge arena for? in the children's field, in the team field or whatever, and this is how I'm going to do it. Other than on the field, I'm actually going to open the doors to another way of being able to reach these kids. Well, um, well, you know, I, I, um, it all started as, 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 as far as the animation. I bought into an, an existing animation company. I brought a couple guys in with me, and we bought a big piece of the company. And and there was a guy who was the main guy of all of this, and he was uh, he was a wacky Irish guy, and he created these wild looking creatures. They're called Dwegans, and there's a few other names for them. And they're offshoots of like leprechauns and all of that kind of stuff. And and the um, and the main anchor on CBS News in Miami is an old friend of mine. And he said, "I gotta get you to meet this guy." Because see, I was not only in the nightclub business, where I uh, I was a partner in a few of the big nightclubs, but I also had an advertising PR company. So I promoted the clubs too. And I did a lot of radio, a lot of TV. I had my own sports talk show in Miami. I had, uh, you know, so I've done a lot of that stuff already. So he calls me up and he says, hey, well, you got to come see this guy. He's sitting on a gold mine here, but he has no money. He needs some investors. So I put a couple guys together. And this was like eight, nine years ago. Okay. So finally, three years ago, it came time to... I needed to come out here to L.A. That's why I sold my house in Park City and I came out here. And it was the, it was time, it was a long, drawn-out process. Being an independent filmmaker is not easy. I don't recommend it for most people, okay? You, you, just, you just run into every roadblock. And then when you finally do a movie, which we created a great family feature, Dwegans and, Dwegans and Leprechauns, we made a a partnership with the Chinese animation company eight years before DreamWorks did, and we pulled off a lot of stuff. But at the end of the day, we couldn't get a distribution deal. Like, independents can't get a distribution deal because who's going to promote it? So I came here to do that. About a year ago, I finally closed the office. I'm like, ah, this just isn't going to happen. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, long story short, the same people, this is, this is so Hollywood, the same people that sat, did a screening of our movie, and after 10 minutes, walked out, didn't say a word. I'm like, what the hell is that? And the same people, three months ago, decided we're the greatest thing since sliced bread. They got a distribution deal for us in all the Walmarts, worldwide, online, Amazon, everything. Okay, I was in the business indirectly already doing voiceover work and already doing a commercial work and all that kind of stuff. But I always wanted to be in Hollywood. I always wanted to be on TV. I always wanted to do that kind of stuff. And the kind of guy that I I am. I love that you did the animation voices. (laughs) <laughs> and and I do all kinds of character voices and all of that kind of stuff, and it's just been great, you know. And we we finally got our distribution; it's selling like crazy for Christmas at Walmart and online. And now we've got a few other, we have a few other projects that now we're getting all kinds of people interested. Wow. So it just kind of became one of those things that I always wanted to do, 
and I put my money where my mouth was, and I thought it was done. I thought it was over. I thought I failed, and again, blessed That's great. again. Now, so for those that are exactly. listening, Walter, that are going to Costco, what is it called so they could buy this for their kids? It's called Dwegans and Leprechaun. D W E G O N S. Dwegans and Leprechauns. Now that sounds like a stocking stuffer for me. And you get to hear Walter and his animated voices. I love that you did this and be part of your success. And I know we only have a couple minutes left, but there's so many things I still want to ask you about. One of them is Big Mama's Christmas on the Hood because it's Christmas season here. What is Big Mama's Christmas on the Hood? I read it on your bio. I was like, what? Well, I read a little thing. I'm reading the paper one day and I'll be short and sweet. I'm reading the paper one day in South Florida, and I see a story about this lady, the big mama, okay? She's a, you know, African-American lady in the deep, deep hood of South Florida, and I don't know what got into me, but I just connected with whatever she was saying. I searched her out. I found her. We met, and we just hit it off immediately, okay? Now, I'm that guy. You can put me with kings, and you can put me with hoods on the street. And I'm good. I'm good with anybody, okay? And, and that's why I'm good with kids, kids, because I get down to their level, okay? But, so, I'm talking to Big Mama, and everybody wants to do this, this, and that. And I go, hey, how about we, and I was tight with all the radio stations. And I, got, and, and I go, Big Mama, I'm going to create a Christmas party for you. I'm going to get my boys together. I'm going to get my connections together. We created a thing where the radio station showed up with the bounce houses and the candy stores. I had local uh, businesses donate all the food. We had a barbecue. Every kid got a got a couple toys. Every kid got a twenty dollar gift certificate to Walmart. And and Big Mama got her things because you know what? God bless her. The, I mean, the inner city can be a scary place. Okay, and with these. And with these and with these under and with these underprivileged at at risk kids, and we got a lady that's taking care of the whole neighborhood. I'm like, how can I not want to help her? She's awesome, the big mama. And we even got that show. What was that show called? Where they, um, you know, uh, you know, a makeover. Oh something. yes. Yes. We contacted them, told them the story. They came and did a show and built a house for her and her kids. And she's still in South Florida. She's still in Fort Lauderdale. You can check her out in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Big mama, okay? And if you'd like to help, if you'd like to do whatever, she's the real deal, man. She takes care of two, 300 of the kids in her neighborhood, and she puts together all kinds of events and if you guys can help out there on Radio Land in any way, go search her out in South Florida. Big Mama, she's awesome. And tell her her big Wally sent you. That's what she told me, her big Wally. <laughs> oh, Walter, this is just so wonderful, and we so appreciate you being here today. And as we only have a couple minutes here in the wrap-up, is there advice you can give women that are looking now to date? As far as you always hear men say, you know, that they are looking – for their muse, is there a way for a woman to listen more, to support a man better? Is there something that women weren't doing when you were dating that you said, gosh, I wish women would do this or could see this? Or is there any great advice for the women or for the men that are out there in our audience today? Well, as far as for the ladies, because obviously I, I am, you know, um, number one, First and foremost, always just be real. Be you. Be you. Don't put on an air because you know what? Sooner or later you're going to let that air down. And then all of a sudden he sees the real deal, and that's not so great. Okay? But number one, be real. Number two, being real means don't lead with a, Hi, I'm Sherry. Here's my shopping list. Don't do it. Don't do it. Inspire the man to want to do things for you. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. You can inspire us to be whatever you want us to be if you inspire us the right way, okay? And don't be, 
don't be too quick or too whatever. Take your time. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. But take your time and get to know and get to know somebody. Mm. Because just that little bit of getting to know them will make the will make the difference between wow, what did I get into and hey, this is really nice. Okay, but just be real, be honest. Communication is key. You got to be able to communicate. Tell them if something's wrong, tell them now, not in three months, please. Tell them now. If something's wrong, if something's bothering you, and this goes both ways, talk on it, speak on it. Put it out on the table and get rid of it so it doesn't fester. So in three months, I don't get smacked upside the head with something stupid I did three months ago. And I'm like, huh? What? Okay? Mm. Just communication. Communication and passion are key elements to a good relationship. Wow, wonderful. And for a man? Well, well, for a man, you know what? If you want a real woman, don't lead with the wallet. Don't lead with, I have a Mercedes. I have a house. I have a this. Is all you're going to do. I mean, I have a friend of mine that got on that millionairematch.com and then he complained about the, the women that were gold. <laughs> Come on, look where you went, okay? So lead with yourself because you know what? I want you to want me, who I am inside. I want you to love me. Once that happens, hey, Everything else gets on the table, too. Okay? But, guys, again, be real. Have some confidence that you've got something inside that will turn her on and that will bring her closer to you. Because if all you're leading with is everything you have, sooner or later that's not going to be good enough, and then it will be the next guy. So, again, for, for the guys, just be real. Be honest. And don't bring past relationships and past screw-ups into your new relationships. And again, if you're the kind of guy that's a man's man, but you also show that you have a heart, oh boy, magic city. That's about all I can tell you. That's beautiful. And then should a guy call the day after a date and say, hey, I had a great time, or would love to take you out. Because so many women say, he didn't call, and he doesn't like me, or, you know, can guys... Put it this way. Yes. Put it this way. Our friend, again, I will refer to the lady, to the woman that I'm dating, that you know, okay? We spent... I, I, I picked her up about 7.30, and I dropped her off about 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay, and we sat on that pier. On my way home, I had about a 20-minute ride home. I called her on the way home, and she loved it. She thought it was the cutest thing. Okay, don't be cool. When, when, when I first came to LA, I did that. Okay, I met a woman that I was like, wow. She gave me her number. I'd love to go out with you, yada, 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 yada. And I waited three days to call her because I thought that was being cool. You can't let them see you, this and that. You know what she told me? Hey, in the meantime, you're awesome, you're great. In the meantime, I met somebody else. See ya. <laughs> right. Okay, so don't outslick yourself, guys. If you like her, call her. Do the little things. If you don't, hey, it's all good. Next, move. But if you like her, do, do the little things. Wow. Well, I thank you so much for being with us today. And this has just been such incredible information and so helpful on both ends for women and for men and I love the advice that you've 
you know, shared with us today, as well as all that you've done. I mean, the, I love your big mama story. <laughs> I love the fact that you're mentoring kids. I love the fact that this young boy is going to be a DA, someone that didn't have hope, didn't have a life now, has gone through college, first in his family, that the fact that you share your time, the fact that even your investments that you were able to dive in and say, okay, I'm going to be the voice of this and be able to have fun and play and share on a different level and the fact that you have now, through this amazing, incredible journey in life, found love, which I'm so happy for you at this yeah, if I could just and add, always. Yes. Yeah, if I could just add one last thing. Yes, of if course. If you're so... Uh, to your audience out there, if they're inspired to be a mentor, to help kids, one word of advice, kids can smell BS a mile away, okay? Don't try to be something you're not. Don't try to be cool or slick with them or this and that, okay? The one thing that I do with my kids that I mentor and that I help I share my own experiences because they know I've walked in their shoes. I did, I'm not just talking to talk. I walked it. I lived it. I was there before them. So I share the stories. I, but I even share my screw-ups because I'll say, hey, you know how I know where you're headed in that dead-end wall? Because here's what I did. And I share wow. stories with them. That's and when great. I share stories, they tend to be a little funny. So that's, that's what you got to do. You can't and talk up. You can't talk down. That's a perfect cap, the cherry on the Sunday, And we certainly thank you for sharing of yourself and sharing your information and your wisdom and your light and your heart and your joy and your incredible journey with us today. And I wish you the happiest holiday season and this week of Thanksgiving, Walter. We are certainly grateful for you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Well, Nicole, I appreciate you having me. It was fun. I'd love to do more with you in the future. And to all you people out there in radio land, internet land, happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays. Enjoy, guys. Enjoy. And you take care, too, Nicole. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Absolutely. We look forward to having you back. Wow. Just incredible information. How much fun to have a guy's perspective on all of this. Just absolutely perfect. So everything that he talked about, from the care to the heart to the intentionality to the honor to the integrity to the love to the honesty to the sharing of yourself, whether that be in a relationship, mentoring children, being able to share the all of who you are and really if something excites you, move towards that. If someone excites you, move towards them. And don't be afraid to take risks because love, like Walter was talking about, could be right around the corner. So this is Nicole Brandon wishing you an incredible week. And Walter Slavery wishing you the happily, happily, happily ever after.